Bon Viveur by Norton and Wilson, because life is meant to be enjoyed. Hi guys, before we get into the main video, don't forget, at the time of uploading this, you just have a couple more days to take up the amazing pre-order special offers for Bon Viveur by Norton and Wilson. If you're watching that after that, you can still buy the fragrance. Either way, just follow the link in the description to pre-order or buy it in the USA, UK, EU and Canada. Don't miss out. Hello everyone, welcome back. So, it's been much requested. It's time for another decade of fragrances with my great friend Chris from the channel Scentland. Hello Chris. Scentland, the land of scent. Hi to everyone. Hi Dan and hi everybody watching. Hi. Yeah, it's, as or ever, it's great to have you on the show and great to have the background from uh, many of your early videos, which I remember very well. And they were a big influence on me, I remember, helped me to, to discover some great fragrances. So we've done a couple of videos already. I think we did one on the 1980s and one on the 1990s. We each pick our five favorite fragrances from that decade and share them with you. So it makes up to a top 10. So the 1970s, of course, the decade when both myself and Chris were born. Uh, but of course, we're probably too young to remember much of the decade. I certainly don't have many memories until we get into the 80s, but it was a, a really outrageous decade, actually, for fashion, really. It's one of those ones, when you look back at a photo from the 70s, you think, wow, <laughs> what were people thinking? That, that you know, everyone was really hairy. <laughs> There's a uh, big the flared trousers, really tight shirts, an incredible decade. And uh, the fragrances, actually, I think, are sort of um, similarly striking, some of them. They're amazing. But some of them are still great today, I think. So let's dive into it, Chris. Uh, you're a great connoisseur of some of the vintage fragrances. I'm very, very intrigued to see what you're going to pick as your top five from the 70s. So what's your first pick, please? First pick... Um... Let's start with the year 1970, okay? And let's uh, again. I was trying to. I was trying to uh, look here at fragrances that are not that obvious, okay? So because there were great fragrances like uh, Yves Saint Laurent pour homme, uh, Paco Rabanne pour homme, uh, Givenchy Gentleman, Azzaro pour homme, you know all these big ones. I was trying. I was trying to kind of look for less obvious ones, but but fragrances that are still available today, okay? So they are not discontinued, available for everybody. To try, okay. And number one, I open up my uh, center stage here as usual. There you go. Number one is from the precious house of Hermes, Paris, and it's called Equipage. Equipage um, released in 1970. It's the first male fragrance Equipage, um, and um, it is a tremendously nice, dry, light, woody shipper fragrance okay it is it is it has some it has some slight um citric aspects and maybe a leathery touch or or probably some extremely dry woody spicy scenario going on but it's 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 not as heavy as most of the 70s fragrances are um it's it's rather somewhere between the 60s and the 70s because it has some lingering uh, elegance but it has also some 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 body there that is that is definitely uh, um, you know aiming toward the heavier fragrances that were to come in the 70s so uh, and a great entry for 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 uh, Hermes into into that um, into that genre into that fragrance uh, uh, market there in the early 70s and I think if I would need to summarize this is very elegant very dry and extremely sophisticated so uh, an absolute um, top 70s release equipage from the house of hermes great a superb choice there and that one early 70s was it is that right 70 yeah 1970 yeah brilliant okay oh fantastic okay and we can still get that and you, you'd say the modern version is still worth going for it, it is interesting because uh, the modern it has been changed a little bit i think the modern version has a bit more of the citrus that makes it a bit more easily likable but it's still a tremendously quality juice so and there's a equipage geranium version now as well that has been released a few years back but equipage is still there it's in it's in the hermes selection and uh and it's fantastic 
Okay, great place to start, and I'm glad you got one in from the very first year of the decade. So I guess it's fitting that my choice, the next one, is, is from the next year, 1971, and it is one of the perhaps more obvious ones that you mentioned, but I thought I had to put it in. And it is uh, Yves Saint Laurent Pour Homme from 1971, yeah. the first fragrance from the house of Yves Saint Laurent for men. And a really, really great fragrance that I absolutely love. The perfume of this one was Raymond Chalian, and it's described as a woody aromatic fragrance. Uh, on the subject of availability, mine is an older bottle that you, you certainly will struggle to find easily. It was re-released in the La Collection series in the, the cube-shaped bottles in, I think, 2011-ish. And that, I think, has now also been discontinued, but not too long ago. So you, if you're keen to find one version or other of this on eBay, you should still be able to. It's, it's not outrageously expensive yet, but it probably will be in a year or two. So that's the info for guys. And I really, really love this one. Uh, I guess it, it's one of those typical first entries for a fragrance house. Dior's Eau Sauvage is a great all-round masculine quite fresh but complex fragrance and this one it has some similarities to that in that it's got quite a lot of lovely citrus in the opening lemon lavender lemon verbena petit grain bergamot then we've got things like rosemary rosewood clary sage all the typical aromatic herbaceous green complex tones always with a lot of these 70s ones if you read out the notes it's a really long listing and this one sure has that and then in the base there you've got patchouli sandalwood vetiver musk tonka bean so it's got this rugged masculinity about it but also i think as you said with the the previous choice there it still has a little bit of that elegance and refinement that uh, that we perhaps associate with, with some of the 50s and 60s classics for men so a real classic and great transition from the the 60s and 50s style sort of fragrances into slightly more rugged territory there was only to get more and more rugged as the decade went on really but just a, for someone like me who loves my sort of citrusy gentlemanly or even barbershop style fragrances this really really works well together today and it almost like a bit of a fizzy aldehyde thing i get with this one too absolutely superb stuff and um i believe that the modern version is a couple of people who've got both have said it, the the cube bottle is still really good if you can get that so don't stress too much superb fragrance and, uh, you know, if you had to have a fragrance to wear throughout the 1970s and you discovered this early on, then you could do a lot worse than to stick with Wire Cell Perom 1971. That's my first choice. Back to you. Yeah, you know what uh, the thing was with, with uh, Yves Saint Laurent at the time made sure that uh, uh, he grabs everybody's attention, okay? I mean, he was around since the mid-50s, okay, together with Karl Lagerfeld in Paris, and they went through the 60s, and then he came to, to launch this fragrance, and he posed himself naked on the ads for this fragrance. He had a pose so that you couldn't see, uh, obviously, the main, main parts of, of his <laughs> nudity, or nudity uh, but you could yeah. see he was a very well-built man, uh, he was it was himself naked okay so he posed himself naked uh, for for the ad for this very fragrance okay uh, that was that was a very very brave thing to do I think but again it, it was, was. I've uh, seen it I'll actually what I'll do is I'll put I'll edit the picture on the screen because yeah. uh, it's clean enough there's nothing uh, there's nothing too revealing so I'll put it on cool um, let's I'm sticking to the year 1971 uh, good year good year um, and uh, I'm going to, again, a fairly unobvious uh, choice uh, from the house of Gainsborough. Gainsborough, Ooh. fragrance called wow. G-Man, released in 1971. Now, G uh, Gainsborough, I think this thing, today this fragrance is still out there and mostly available in German-speaking countries, okay? And uh, it's being made today by the house of Juvena, who does uh, fragrances as well as, as beauty products. But they very much kept it alive. It's very much out there. It has the shower gel as well and, and the deodorant, everything out there. Um, mostly, as I say, in Germany and, and in Austria very much. So if you go shopping in Vienna, this is definitely there. Um, and this is a tremendously nice, dark, floral herbal barbershop soapy fragrance okay this is probably if i would need to choose and i did a top soapy fragrances this was on my top uh i don't really like soapy fragrances if they're somehow too obviously soapy okay 
but the way the darkness here um, and the floral herbal aspect together with some moss and great great aldehydes the aldehydes here i love aldehydes in the fragrance and the aldehydes here are perfect they they provide this fragrance with a, with an uplifting sort of a sort of positive and energizing um framework in order then to to smell clean as well while at the same time being dark and mysterious extremely gentlemanly um it's a dress up fragrance probably more uh, but but it's dark mysterious extremely well performing as well uh, like two three sprays and you i think uh, then you would love and you would absolutely adore this fragrance because it's really i think it's a top notch of those dark, mysterious, yet, yet aldehyde fresh, soapy, herbal, floral fragrances. There's lots of geranium in here as well. So, so uh, it's, it's very, very interesting, very intriguing for somebody who appreciates uh, the, uh, the fragrances of the 70s. And again, here it is, Gainsborough G-Man, okay? 100 mil order toilet, beautiful. Yes, yeah, uh, absolutely stunning. So that's my wow. it smells like 1971 for some reason. Perfect year for for this somehow. Man, I've never heard of that one. That's incredible. Uh, Gainsborough G Man, and it still looks like that today because that looks very 70s to me. Yeah, yeah it's, it it looks like this today. And if you go into a shop in Vienna, you can get exactly this part. They didn't update the uh, the packaging. I like that. That sounds really good, actually. I, I actually try, I tried to order that Soldano Black from the last video. Uh, but I, I bought one on eBay in Italy and then uh, it got cancelled or something. They're out of stock, so I'll try again. But uh, this is another one for the list. And Gainsborough G-Man, I'm sure that the, the majority of our viewers have never heard of that one. So great choice. It sounds really nice. Okay, moving on then. Um, I'm doing a, a chronological thing here. So we are going to... I, I think that this is a less obvious choice. It's Eau de Guerlain. And this was a 1974 release. So uh, you, you can get it in the lovely bee bottles here. And this was uh, perfumer Jean-Paul Guerlain, of course, from the mid-70s. And it's a citrus aromatic fragrance. So uh, it, again, it's uh, a little bit reminiscent of things like Dior's Eau Sauvage, perhaps, from the 60s. Beautiful uh, complementary mixture of lovely, really nice, fresh, juicy citrus opening notes. But then a lot going on in the base, a, a sort of a barbershop vibe. There's lavender rose, geranium, uh, base notes, you've got oak moss, uh, sandalwood, amber, opens with the usual stuff of the lemon, bergamot, there's a little bit of mint, neroli. So for me, it's it's a quite manly citrus aromatic fragrance. Some of the Guerlain ones in this uh, O series are very, very neroli centric or just very, very citrusy, eau de fleur de cedrat, uh, eau de cologne imperial, and that's great. But this has a little bit more complexity, and maybe I guess that ties in with it being a 70s fragrance, but it's by no means a powerhouse. It's, it really just happened to come out in the 70s, and I, I actually think it's not really a, a very 70s smell. It's, it's a quintessentially elegant, timeless, gentlemanly fragrance you just don't hear a lot about, and you can still get this one, fingers crossed, I think today. Uh, it's not mega cheap it's sort of designer fragrance prices but it's really really worth having and very few other people are going to have this one so i guess galan um at this point were not to particularly tying in with the zeitgeist of the times they just released a quintessentially timeless elegant masculine citrus aromatic and it stands right up there with quite a few others in my collection so eau de galan 1974 try it if you can folks <laughs> Yeah, very, back very to good, you. Very, very, very classy choice. Let me let me see if I can follow that up in, in regards to classiness. Well, um, actually, now the other one. Yeah, uh, we jump into Italy, and it's a very, very uh, like uh, very much a mainstream drugstore type of scenario going on. But uh, it was the first aftershave I've ever used. Not all the toilet aftershave, and denim, denim. Um, Italian fragrance, many people don't know that, released in 1976, okay, still around today. It has, today it has an Eau de Toilette version is, as well, which is absolutely stunning. Uh, like, that one is absolutely, like, perfect. The, the concentration, obviously, with the, with the aftershave, 
it was always the thing, yeah, it's only an aftershave and it's, it's not as complex, which wasn't really true because it was really, really long lasting and well performing. But today there's another toilet as well in the range, which smells exactly like the, like the aftershave. This is again, this is a, this is again, such an uplifting, um, yet heavy leathery composition. Okay. And, and it, it's, it's, it's all about, it's all about the seventies really. Um, uh, when there was a lot, lot of masculine energy in anything in the fashion that you've mentioned, everything, the gold chains were big, the, head, the chest hair was huge, uh, the, <laughs> the, the shoes were elevated, the, 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 the jeans had bell buttons, okay, and Elvis had big side burns. So, you know, it was, everything was, you know, very much out there and, uh, and, and, and masculinity was very much out there. And this is a positive take on that, okay, it's still variable today. Obviously, it's, it's going to smell like the year, like 1976, but it's still, I think, it's connected with a lot of memories for me as well, because as I say, it's the, it's the first aftershave I used for, really for shaving uh, at the time. But it, it, it is such a, a nice, uplifting, complex, yeah, very deep, leathery, woody, um, dry, uh, some, some sort of herbal, um, composition that I that I really really adore to this day and when I smell it I really get it lifts me up and it's such a bright and positive smell denim uh, I think it's Confer uh, Italia and uh, the ad for this was in, in the Italian um, at the, in the Italian media at the time per l'uomo chi non deve chiedere mai meaning for the man who never has to ask you know it's just things are just flying his way okay and, and <laughs> I, and I remember the ad, I think it, I, this is the first fragrance ad I remember. And I was a kid, like I was like probably 10 years old or something. And the ad was that there, there was this guy, you know, putting on this, this you know, splash. And then you, you, could, you wouldn't see only his, his chin and, and downward. And he had this denim jacket on. And a woman started from behind. You couldn't see the woman either in her face. I mean, just her hand. She was coming forward and unbuttoning his buttons on this on this denim jacket okay and then that was the stop okay and then the ad ended so it was, it was like wow what's going on there so denim per l'uomo che non deve chiedere mai <laughs> very bold brilliant i love the yeah that kind of advertising straight to the point uh, less <laughs> subtle but <laughs> not so ironic and clever as we have to have today so I do kind of like that about the 70s just to talk about the decade a little bit obviously we were both uh, just about alive but we probably we weren't out uh, socializing yet but do you have any anything that you would sort of say is maybe a, the, the music of the 70s that people should yeah. think of as, as you, you think the quintessential 70s kind of music or any uh, fashion <laughs> items Definitely. I mean, I mean, uh, prog rock started, uh, hard rock started, uh, punk started, like all yeah. these great artists. Uh, many, many great artists died very early from, from Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin, uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Elvis yeah. Presley. And, you know, so, so it, it was a very, it was all drugs, sex, drugs and rock and roll big time. Okay. I, I'm reading the, the biography of Billy Idol. I mean, he's telling stories incredible. Um, and, and Sex Pistols and, and things like that. So, so tremendous, tremendous music and, and prog rock. And of course, disco, but I'm not that much into disco, so I won't talk about it. And uh, in regards to movies, um, my, my, one of my favorite movies has to be uh, Mean Streets. Um, for, it was the first Scorsese movie uh, starring Harvey Keitel and, and um, Robert De Niro uh, yeah. together. Uh, it, it's such a rough, um, kind of almost like an unedited documentary instead of a Hollywood movie. And of course, Jaws. I mean, to me, the 70s is all about Jaws, Robert Shaw, Roy Schneider, Richard Dreyfuss. Um, I, I'm a huge Jaws fan. And if I think of the 70s, I think of, uh, of Jaws, definitely. And, and, and Robert Shaw, first and foremost, who I think uh, died in the 70s as well, one of the greatest English, uh, uh, British actors that, and writers uh, that has ever been. And he loved his scotch and he loved his life and he died early, unfortunately. But yeah, Robert Shaw. He was good. Yeah, he was the, uh, the, the guy who was kind of in charge of the boat, wasn't he? And uh, uh, yeah, he, was he, he got... He was, he was 
fisherman who's going to uh, catch the shark, but then it turned out to be the other way around. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jaws is an amazing film and the reason why I still don't, even if I'm only in Europe where I don't think we have too many sharks, I, I don't really like to go in the sea much above my waist <laughs> to this day. Thanks to that film, it shows how, how effective it was. Really great film. I can remember, you mentioned some really good musical trends, but like you say, there was all, I mean, you had ABBA, you had disco, which again, I'm not into. You had all kinds of different stuff, punk at the end of the decade. I really liked Led Zeppelin. They, they were great. Uh, but there was some real rubbish as well. We had in the UK, we had the Bay City Rollers, which was wow. huge for a while. They were oh man, I mean, it's kind of fun to look back now. But it was it was kind of <laughs> manufactured music started to really happen, and we wow. we had the Gary Glitter as well, the the glam rock scene, which when you look at it now, it just looks so absurd. But ap apparently, these guys were huge heartthrobs back then. So all kinds of outrageous stuff was going on, and like you say, the sex and drug stuff was. Uh, not necessarily for the average man with a normal job, but certainly for the the celebrities and stuff. There was no holds barred, really. It was it was before people went to rehab, probably. So it was uh, good good times indeed. Okay, now my next fragrance. I'm going to go again. It was one that you mentioned at, at the beginning, but I, I definitely wanted to include it. So it's Givenchy, gentlemen. 1974 release, and it was the second release from the house of Givenchy, who, who had uh, only previously, I think, released Monsieur de Givenchy in terms of men's fragrances. And um, well, one of the things I really love, actually, which is why I'm showing the, the box, is I, I think the box design is just great. And you unfortunately, the more recent versions don't didn't come like this, but it's a really, really classic. Uh, I guess it's a letter G, but it's also a kind of Greek keys symbol or whatever, but it's, it's very classy and one of the big reasons that i'm picking it is it was actually my dad's signature scent uh which he was first bought by my mum i think in an airport on the way back from somewhere in the 70s uh there's the bottle design very simple uh, this is the vintage version i believe you can still get this i think it is still in production uh, but it, I, I feel it may be for the chop soon and um, the recent iterations are a little bit attenuated but still good and still recognizable now to be quite honest i don't actually have huge memories of it as associated with my dad because he didn't really wear it very often it was just maybe bought at christmas and he, he wasn't really an aftershave guy unless he went out with my mom or something but um most of the time he just went to the pub on the way back from work so <laughs> i don't think he had any you know it was kind of just for every once a month he maybe wore aftershave but the reason i remember it is that it was it was there sat on their dressing table in the bedroom all the time. So it was my first experience of what an aftershave was. I had never heard of fragrance notes or that this was a heavy fragrance or so. You know, I just thought this is kind of how aftershave smells. So uh, even in the 90s when I was a, a young teenager, it was still uh, his scent. And I used to splash it on, which was, uh, I did, little did I know, I was wearing a, a 70s hairy-chested powerhouse fragrance because it really is a remarkable creation, actually. Uh, there, there are the usual citrusy notes as bergamot in this one. You've got honey and cinnamon, too, though. Patchouli, it's very much a patchouli bomb. And um, patchouli was, it kind of got big, didn't it, in the late 60s, a kind of hippie thing that hippies would, would just scent themselves with patchouli. And you really do smell the patchouli. There's civet and musk so it's a little bit animalic and it's it's very raw and masculine and, and it's also got a nice russian leather note so very very rich potent masculine fragrance but that didn't actually stop me wearing it uh, in my early 20s on you know hot summer's days on dates so you know we had no conception of seasons or anything like that of being a you know, one for summer one fragrance for winter but it's it's really really potent and rich rich stuff uh i'm not sure it's my favorite fragrance to wear now very often but i think it's a remarkable creation and very much of its time a, a true i think a true powerhouse style fragrance but also a very beautiful refined and complex piece of french perfumery which everyone should try uh, at least once or twice if they can so Givenchy gentlemen 1974, the year of a great World Cup, wasn't it, in West Germany? Back yes. to you. Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, interesting because I think that was the, 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 the fragrance that my, got, my mom got for my dad, so as far as I can remember. Oh, wow, so, really? You know, that just tells you. Uh, uh, yeah, small world, right? Okay, the year 1977 then, the year 
when Elvis died, so uh, so a fragrance released by the house of Aramis, Aramis called Devin. Ar obviously, Aram Aramis the sub brand of Estee Lauder, and Devin is a country eau de Cologne. Okay, that, that was the name, country eau de Cologne, and it's supposed to be uh, evoking the the feeling and the moods and the vibes and the smell of the English countryside. That, the 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 ad was all about that. You know, it was all green and, and nice English landscapes, and that's exactly how it smells the 70s way. Okay. This is, this is an extremely horrible, um, green, uh, leathery, chypre, um, mossy, woody fragrance that is very um, relaxing, um, extremely dated. If, you, if anybody would smell this today, and it's still available, not in this bottle, this is the vintage one I'm holding here. Uh, from 77 but it's still available it's still, still being made by aramis in the gentleman's collection uh um series and and it really smells um uplifting and calming in in a in a in a good old uh old-fashioned english way um and out hunting with the dogs and and returning down to the castle to have a nice whiskey that that type of scenario okay and driving around in your in your range rover uh that's how it does but it's beautiful it's really 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 nice and the performance like it's an old country or the cologne okay but it outperforms many other parfums of today devin by aramis Ah, brilliant. You see, there's so many good ones in that range from Aramis that people really should should have a little look at because uh, they've they got some really good ones and it's not the, the range of fragrances that all of us think of as often as we perhaps should. So really interesting house, actually, Aramis. And I know you're a big advocate of some of their other ones, including Havana from the 90s. So very fascinating com company, um, which does have some absolute gems, guys. So we'll move on to my penultimate pick. And uh, I think this is, I think I'm flying a little bit under the radar here. I hope viewers will agree. So I've gone with Gucci Pouron from 1976. I only have the aftershave because it's really hard to find the eau de toilette. But guys, don't think that the aftershave is, is not worth your time if you're looking for vintage stuff. They can sometimes, as Chris has said, sometimes they perform surprisingly well and the smell is, is normally exactly the same, really. Um, so don't neglect aftershaves. And this is a superb fragrance. 1976 release. It was Guy Robert, the perfumer. And it's a Chypre, Woody Chypre fragrance. Um, and I'll give you the note listings. Amalfi, lemon, bergamot, lavender, basil, sandalwood. You've got patchouli, carnation, spices, uh, Virginia cedarwood, iris, geranium, pepper, jasmine, oak moss, leather, labdanum, amber, musk, tonka bean, vanilla. So tons and tons of notes in this one. Suffice to say that it's a beautiful, beautiful, crisp citrus opening. It's a very bitter fragrance. <laughs> and it's a little bit leathery and rugged again in the base, but it's very green. And if you like your citrus fragrances, it, again, for a first entry, I think, into the world of fragrances from the house of Gucci, they've done what so many do, which is give us something that's a great all-rounder. It's got beautiful, crisp freshness, complexity. Again, it's an Italian house, but it's uh, Guy Robert, so it feels like classic French perfumery at its absolute best. And this one was really, really beautiful. It's, it's really hard to find this one now, but if you if you like things like Chanel's Pour Monsieur, if you like Monsieur de Givenchy, but you want something a little bit more rugged, a little bit more masculine, in keeping with the theme of the 70s. This is really worth uh, seeking out. And I, I found this actually strangely in a charity shop. It was, I think, unopened. And remarkably, all these years later, I never smelled it in the 70s, but it, it smells like it was made yesterday. So I really got lucky with that one. It's just a splash, but I put it in an atomizer. And I absolutely recommend Gucci Pour On, the original, 1976. So Chris, I think... It's your last choice now. Yes, the last choice and last choice is fairly obvious because this one is a is a very prominent one of the 70s one and uh, that has been very popular at the time and still very popular today and by my favorite, one of my favorite uh, um, designer artists, you can say, um, of all time, everybody's going to recognize the bottle. Lagerfeld, Karl Lagerfeld, um, it was simply called Cologne at the time, today it's called Classic. Um, there are several versions of this um, 
throughout the years because Lagerfeld changed the, 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 the companies that he worked with in regards to fragrances. Um, this one is from about 15 years ago. And, and although the letters are, are uh, the, like the, in the new or at the new bottles, uh, it, this smells very much like the, uh, the original vintage version. Again, um, aldehydes play a role of, of um, tremendous refreshing aspect of this fragrance, but not in a citrus or rosemary or, or mint type kind of refreshment or, or, or aquatic refreshment. This is this is very much the 70s type of refreshment where you had where heavy frame somewhere uh, at you with, with a with a mood and 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 um, and confidence lifting kind of scenario. Okay, it, it was just very, very special yaldehyde, the way that yaldehydes were used at the time. And with this fragrance, this is a fragrance that requires a lot of, of time and special sort of application. So if you spray this on pure skin and then immediately start to smell it, it's not going to give it, you're going to say this is a mess, okay? So the way you go with this, you, you spray this underneath the shirt or on your chest and then, then dress up and then let it become one with the body chemistry and, and body heat and let it linger. That's the thing with this fragrance. Let it linger and work with your body chemistry and body heat because then it, you're going to have these fantastic, everlasting whiffs of uh, tremendously nice, warm, ambery, leathery um, sophistication that is, that is just... Uh, Ron Vinegrad was the was the parfumeur on this one, and Karl Lagerfeld designed the bottle himself. Um, he did the design on this, so that also shows you how much uh, a designer at the time was involved in making, creating his or her own fragments. Um, so but this is still around uh, uh, in the in the um, Lagerfeld line, um, and I totally adore it. It's one of my signature scents. It always comes back. It has a tremendous amount of memories, and it's very much an, a child of the '70s. But somehow, um, if, if, if applied well, um, can be created still today as a very, very special aroma. This is, a, this is our, an, an aroma that has been created here by Ron Vinagat. Something, something very special, very specific, but it has to be worn the right way in order to shine at its best. Great choice. I was assuming you might include that one, and I'm very glad that you did. Uh, I think it's, as, as you say, I think it's one of those fragrances that at first spray, or if you just spray it on your hand or a piece of paper, I, I've sprayed it and thought, oh, I don't know if I really like that. But uh, as you say, wear it properly and you really experience it. And again, as with so many in this list, it symbolizes a very different conception of what masculinity was supposed to be all about back in those days. Uh, and, and once you kind of embrace that, you can really appreciate some of these gems. So my last one briefly, uh, again, it's a bit of an obvious titan of the industry, but I had to include it. It's Polo Green from Ralph Lauren. 1978, it was first released. Probably really a fragrance that was as uh, much about the 80s as the 70s because, it, you know, that was what people then were going on to wear throughout the 80s. Some people have said it's the smell of success in the 80s because a lot of guys apparently in the States, the kind of uh, CEOs and that kind of person were, were wearing this one apparently. Uh, a real green, piney, mossy type uh, sheep per fragrance. Very, very complex note listing again, which I won't go into, but there's pine needles in this one. Um, there's a bit of a hint of tobacco in it. It's, it's very green and it's very masculine and it's very rugged, uh, but it's it's not really got anything particularly animalic, but it's, it's got a, a very uh, woody, masculine, forest-like aura and it, it really reeks of masculinity and not being afraid to be smelled, I think, quite strongly. And it's not a kind of yeah. namby-pamby type fragrance. It's very rugged, rugged and masculine. And, and you know, uh, as we both mentioned, our, our, our respective mums bought Givenchy Gentlemen for our dad. So this kind of thing was, was uh, thought of as sexy for men back then. It wasn't all about smelling just nice and clean like a shower gel or like candy floss like guys want to smell sometimes nowadays. You could smell really rugged and masculine. And, and the ladies back then, <laughs> perhaps 
uh, liked it, maybe more than they do today, but maybe, uh, maybe they still do if you find the right one. So a really great fragrance. I'm lucky to have a vintage bottle, but the modern version's still really good. So we're going to wind it up there. Sorry that we had a few little technical problems, viewers. Due to, I think we used a 1970s satellite to record the, the link rather than the internet by the looks of it. But uh, no, it's, it, I think it was absolutely fine in the end. So Chris... It was great to have you on the show. I'm extremely grateful. We're going to do another one. We'll pick the next decade. Guys, let us know in the comments what decade next. We've done the 70s, 80s, 90s, but we can go back or forwards. Let us know what you want us to do next. Thank you for joining me, Chris. I think, well, it's a good point to end because we've lost him. Viewers, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.